Okay, so assalamu alaikum and um, welcome or welcome back um, to our sessions on Inspired by Faith and Science, um, which is all supported by British Science Association, UK Research and Innovation and the Foundation for Digital Creativity. So yes, um, today's session is once again all about the sun. And um, that actually reminds me of a of a complaint letter that I read recently, addressed to the Sun. So basically, um, it was uh, it was written that um, well, the, the, the letter was something like, "Dear Sun, can you please go into your setting, go into your display, go into your brightness, and can you reduce your brightness, please? Because currently it's unbearably hot." And then the Sun replied back, saying, "Dear Anonymous, I haven't changed my setting." Can you please go to your setting and reduce the concrete forest, increase trees, reduce your carbon emission, and increase the lakes? And how can I mean how can you reply to that? You really can't. I mean, that's the truth. I mean, you know, today um, global warming and climate change, it's a real thing. And um, you know, it's a challenge, it's one of the challenges of our time. And um, leading on to today's, um, today's theme through, um, of the sun, you know, by us learning something about the sun, we can contribute towards this, this challenge. So on that note, um, we have our guests and welcome back to them. So we have um, Geraldine Cox, um, artist and physicist from Imperial College London, and Dr. Stephanie Yardley, um, solar scientist um, from the University College London. But before we go to our guests, I think Stad Munim has joined us. So um, I'm going to request um, our students teacher from the boys' school to share a few words in relation to some please. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, guys. I hope everyone's okay. Um, it's very bef it's very befitting today that we're talking about the sun, especially with the level of sun we've had the past few days. It's been boiling. I've got I've literally got my phone on right now. I sound a bit like a robot. <laughs> it's because the fans uh, the, the fans blowing air into my face. Um, one thing I found super interesting, especially from the last session, I think Geraldine mentioned, um, it's not just light and um, heat energy that comes from the sun. It's actually every, Geraldine and Marianne saying, every source of energy comes from the sun, right down to the point where the calories that we eat are, are you know, effectively from the sun as well. And it's just what you mentioned as well, uh, um, about, you know, the letter to the sun and how people are complaining about it. Yeah, it does get hot, but in Islam, the sun is a great blessing from Allah because not only do we get our heat from it, but you know even the food that we eat, uh, it's all, well, not all down to, but one of the key components is the fact that we have the sunlight there to, to, to allow it to grow. And besides the, the fact that, you know, it, it helps the, the, the food grow and obviously just in general, it's good for your health. Allah actually says in the Quran that when you look into the skies, and you look into the heavens, that you should look out there, look into the heavens, and even, even last session, unfortunately, I couldn't join, but last session, I was going to mention that Allah actually tells us to look into the, look into the sky, look into the heavens, at night time, look into the heavens, that's why so many Islamic scholars were, uh, astro, uh, you know, looked into uh, space when they could, because it's, it's ordered in the Quran, because through it, you actually realize the magnificence, magnificence of Allah, and Allah also says in Surah Mulk, uh, that look into the sky, look at the, you know, look into the sky, and وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيهَا Allah says that we've beautified the nighttime sky with lanterns. But he doesn't mean lanterns as in the lanterns that we have, but rather the stars in the sky. And when I was young, I used to always wonder what stars were. And then when I grew up to learn that they're actually uh, suns, you know, or the solar systems, I was, I was mind, like, my mind just couldn't understand it. I thought it'd be like daytime because there's so many stars in the sky. And when we were younger, I remember there were a lot more stars. It's probably because of light pollution. I, again, I'm not an expert. But when we were younger, we used to see so many stars. And a few years ago, I went on holiday and we were sort of living, we were in a rural area. And I, I looked up at the sky one night and I was just amazed at how many stars there were in the sky. And it just reminded me of this ayat that not only is the sun just there for, for, for our mercy, it's a mercy from Allah, but even just as... A, a sign of a, of beauty, and again because Geraldine is an artist as well, that uh, art and Islam and science and Islam they all go hand in hand. So it's something which is so befitting for today's session as well. So inshallah, with that, I'll pass it back to inshallah. Myself. 
Zakumla, thank you very much. Yeah, um, I think we've got one more session, which is kind of related to astronomy, so we can learn more about um, how we we are actually challenged to look up to the heavens, to search, you know, to discover more about the universe that we live in. But anyway, um, I think uh, before we go to our guests, uh, we'll hand it over to Happy Steven to introduce some more participants, please. Assalamu alaikum, guys. Good evening uh, to everybody joining on Facebook and to our participants, our special guests. Um, if you find us napping or tired, it's because we just had two days of so much food and uh, to deprived of some sleep. I've got family over, so late night movies, which I don't do, but I think the young people have done. Sarah mentions in cinemas, uh, so we are. Uh, time, but we've got some amazing guests. Uh, one of our first guests on this program that we had, uh, Geraldine and Stephanie. But before we go to them, uh, let's ask you to introduce yourself and maybe mention uh, some of the foods you had. If you can mention the Quranic foods that we mentioned uh, in one of the sessions, if you had any of those foods as well. So let's start with the person on my right, who is Zara. Assalamu alaikum and hello. Uh, my name is Zara and Iadi, um, what fruit? So um, I did have, so we had this like salad thing. So we had like apples in it, had watermelon in it. It had bananas in it and it had like figs and stuff. It had a mix of stuff and there was other stuff on the side. So we had them kind of fruits that I remember. Of. It's my favorite, that a mixture of salad, fruit, fruit salad. Amazing. Um, Sahil, did you have that or did you have the unhealthy parts? Sahil is uh, Zara's sister, um, those that don't you know. Are you on mute, Sail? Yeah. I'm not Zara's sister. What does his sister? Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sahil, and I'm not Zara's sister. Sister. <clears throat> but anyway, on either I did have the same um, stuff. I had a lot of figs, I had um, cucumbers, and a, a lot of I mean, uh, other stuff that I mentioned in the Quran. And um, today I wanted to say I'm very um, interested because last lesson I learned a lot, like, I, like, like how the sunspot is the same size of the earth and many other things. So inshallah, today I want to learn more knowledge and ilm. Inshallah, mashallah, amazing. Right, uh, Rani and Sumaya? Do I like introduce myself? Yeah, please. Um, I'm Rani, I'm 13, I'm in year eight. And um, the fruit that we had that was from the lesson, like from the Quran was pomegranate. I think. Mm. Um, yeah. That's amazing. One of the foods of. Um, I'm Samaya. I'm nine years old. I'm in year five. And yeah, we had pomegranate on weed. Okay. Was it from Arif Kashukari or was it from somewhere else? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know. No, probably. I thought maybe you grew it in your garden or something, mashallah. I'm going to have to come over and rob it someday. Right. Uh, Jahed, who we missed for the past few sessions. Uh, and no, yeah. samosas aren't from the Quran before you say it. <laughs> no, I was not gonna say some old so I was gonna say handish. Okay, anyways. Um <laughs> Assalamualaikum and good afternoon to everybody that's watching on Facebook and uh, everybody on Zoom. My name is Jahid, I'm in year nine, I'm fourteen. And I think this fruit mentioned Surah Waqiya as bananas and um yeah, they went quite nice, tasty. The yellow. MashaAllah. Uh afternoon. Uh where are you in uh, which country is six hours behind the Bangladesh? Six hours behind Bangladesh. Bangladesh. You're still in afternoon, yeah? Mashallah. Um, right, let's ask Nabil. See Eid Mubarak in the back, nice backdrop. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Uh, my name is Nabil. I'm in Yere. I didn't eat any fruit, just like samosas and stuff. Mashallah. Same to me. I, I stayed away from fruit, as bad as it sounds. Uh, eat day is a treat day. Uh, Hamza Muhammad Hamza. Oh, Shuhana. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad Hamza. I'm in year seven. Uh, I eat pomegranates for Eid. Mm, deadly. Those are the juiciest ones. Uh, Tahir. Um, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Tahir. I'm in year 10. And for Eid, I had an olive. Mashallah. Just an olive, yeah? All day you had one. Yeah, I've been ill. That's why. So you did it, subhanAllah. May Allah give you shifa, may Allah give you a cure and make you stronger from this illness, inshaAllah. Uh, Shohan and Sumaya, did you guys share one olive as well? 
no, I don't. I don't remember why yesterday actually. Allah. I just remember eating like a lot of water and stuff. Eating, that's good. I mean, oh. drinking. Okay. Let's no. go into the bathroom, so I'll just introduce myself. Okay. Hi, I'm Samaya. I'm in year nine, and I'm fourteen, and I don't remember um why yet yesterday. Oh wait, I had a meet yesterday. Meat. I just remember that. That's okay. That's fine. As long as you don't eat water in the future, make sure you drink it. Uh, Sabir. Um, hello, my name is Sabir. I'm in year nine. I'm in year, I'm fourteen, and I'm in year nine. I had olives yesterday. Okay, that's good. At least you did have one olive. You had plenty of olives. I like the plural, the use of the S. Uh, Yahya. Is that miss uh, again? Uh, Yahya, is that, uh, I forgot what that sign is. Really? I can hear you, Yahya. No problem. If you don't want to speak, no problem at all. Uh, at the end, maybe have some questions put in the chat. And last but not least, Omar Hamza. Um, 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 my name is Omar Hamza. I'm in year eight. On on Eid, I didn't uh, I didn't eat anything because I also was feeling well. I just had some um, water and that's it. Yeah. Fasting. Mashallah, fasting. Yeah. But well, we're not allowed to fast on Eid days. Our celebration day. We're not allowed to keep fast. Uh, but again, if you're ill, uh, may Allah make it easy for you. Now, enough of me. I think everyone's introduced themselves. Yeah. Unless Labi wants to introduce himself, was he too cool for school? Labi. What, what did he eat? What did he do? Say, Dad, Dad, don't put me on, Dad, don't put me on, Dad. <laughs> right, so all right, we will have lovely one. Uh, to our main guests, uh, over to you. The floor is yours, Jaladine and Stephanie. Thank you so much. Um, good evening, everyone. It's totally brilliant to be here, isn't it, Steph? Yeah, it's brilliant to be back. Thanks for having us again. Seems like yesterday since we were last here, actually. Now oh, no. we're uh, we're all back together. Um, so tonight, I thought we would um, start with your amazing artworks that have blown us away, haven't they, Steph? Yes, yeah, completely blown away. Incredible. I've been sharing them with people, some really renowned scientists, actually, and everyone just loves them so much. Yeah, Helen, Helen said about it earlier as well. Um, yeah, so that's Helen at Cambridge. Yeah, yeah. Our colleagues. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so we'll start with that. And then we'll go on to um, talk a little bit about Ibn al-Haytham. And I think you guys have been talking about him already. Is that right? I mean, have you, Mohammed, spoken? Yeah. yeah? We, we were, had, we had like, um, we had a PowerPoint and there was a bit about him in the PowerPoint. Great, thank you. Well, I want to pick up on just some very particular things and give you guys a couple of kind of really art science challenges to try out. So uh, we'll do that. And then after that, I think we'd just like to share with you a couple of extraordinary and beautiful ideas, um, which I'm just gonna keep up my sleeve until we get there. <laughs> I don't think Steph even knows what they are, but she does I'm, know I'm, the ideas. <laughs> I'm thinking about it now, what it can be. I've been, I've been working away. And you, Steph, if you have any other extraordinary and beautiful ideas to share, just you know, log them and we'll do that at the end. And then of course, any questions you guys have, you know, as we go, let's just uh, let's just uh, pick them up um, either as we go or at the end, whatever works for all of you. Okay, so I'm gonna um, share my screen and we're gonna look at your work first of all. Um, so bear with me one second. Oops, no, I don't want to share this. Um, not that one. Um, I want to share. Um, thanks for your patience, everybody. Uh, Chrome, I don't want to. I'm very, very sorry about this, everybody. I just want to find Chrome. One second. Um, OK, there we go. You thought I'd never done this before. Right. Can everyone see that? Yeah, we can see that. Yeah. Um, um, it's so totally gorgeous. I thought we just, who, if people are here who've made these artworks, it would just be really nice if you would like to, just to say a couple of words. And we'll just work from the top and go down, if that sounds like a plan. Just, just I mean, is, is the person that made this one? Because I don't know anybody's names, are, you know, next to the artworks. Is the person who made this one here? Yeah. 
Do you want to just tell us about it? It's basically um, a future space of the sun and England with what it looks like if you're in space from the Northern Lights. I totally love it. What do you think, Steph? Yeah, I love it too. I like the, the colours and the contrast. Did you draw around something to get, this, to get the sun? Or is that? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Thought... Earth looks so fresh and watery and, and large because it is large to us, isn't it? And the sun looks so distant. It's really lovely. Anybody want to comment on it? Yeah, it's really nice. It's really lovely, isn't it? it yeah, is really. It, it reminds me of those images you were showing, Steph, of the um, space station going over Earth a little bit. Yeah, it does. It does. It reminds me of that movie. Where yeah. You the lights. Yeah, really nice. Really super. Well done, well done. It's really lovely. And OK, this one, and let's get them up like this. Yeah. Why didn't I do that first time? That's because I can just click on them. There we go. Just so everyone can have a really nice look. Um, this gorgeous piece who is the person who did this here. Um, yeah, hi, I'm here. Hi, do you want to tell us what, what, was, what you were thinking about? So um, it was a painting. Um, so I was thinking of doing the sun, but then the sunset as well, how it is, um, like when the sun's like, I think setting, I was trying to think of. How, how big is it? Can you show us with your hands roughly? Like, what do you mean, like, as... Yeah, is, um, it, is it like this size or bigger um, or what's the size? It's like that size. And you've met, what sort of paint have you used? Um, I use a paint that um, we got um, in our packs. It's really lovely. What do you think, Steph? Yeah, Simon, I was going to ask what paint you used, but the, the, the colours really reflect, yeah, the sunset, the kind of reds and oranges and yellows that you get when you see the sunset. And the more you look at it, it captivates you more and more. The sun is that you've made is kind of hypnotic, isn't it? You sort of fall into it. Does anybody want to say anything about it? Yeah. It's got two very good gradients on it, and I really like that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's the it, the um, the sort of different gradients. Yeah, they, they're really surprising. They really add something, don't they? It looks really warm, almost like a heat is coming off it. <laughs> Yeah, it feels really hot and dynamic. It's a really great piece of work. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's go to this lovely thing. And it's the person who did this one here. Yeah, it was me. Um, it's I you as well. One. Yeah. <laughs> I did this one outside with buttercups because I remember when you were showing me us about like with leaves. So in our garden, we had a lot of buttercups that so I thought, make use of that and then yeah that's how it turned out it's just it's gorgeous it's heart melting what do you think Steph yeah it's really it's really pretty um I just love I love yeah I love the little buttercups that you've used all into one it's, yeah it's just really nice yeah so, anybody so, want to anybody want to comment anyone else it's nice how really you nice. use nature it's amazing, isn't it? When you gather nature's colours together, there's a guy, there's an artist called Andy Goldsworthy, and uh, he's not that well known. And he spends all of his time gathering things of different colours together. And, and you really see how, in, how intense nature's colours are when you gather them together like that. It's great. It's really super, super, super piece of work. And then what about this gorgeous yellow in the blue? It's the person who did this here. Yeah. Okay, tell us. Tell us it's what you've made it from. It's basically supposed to be the sun in space, but then it got smudged. It got smudged. <laughs> it looks like you were painting a bit, even almost with your fingers, almost like it's the, the paint is yeah. really thick, isn't it? For, for the sun, I used my fingers. And then I, with, with, with my thumb, I spreaded the paint out for, the sp for space. I tell you what, you've really got the kind of textures of the sun going on there what do you think Steph? I was gonna say I like the smudge I like the smudging effect and what's that what's it called when you use um is it complementary colors what's that when you use oh, yeah. like <laughs> yellow orange and um yeah. bluey purple so even I'm <laughs> I'm learning so you're not far off Steph you're not far off I, does anybody know what a complementary color is have you guys come across it at all 
Um, it's when complementary colors, an example would be, uh, let me get this, I hope I get this right. Um, orange and purple and green and red. And it's when you, if you looked at something green and you shut your eyes, you see red on your retina, it's almost like the, the exact opposites as far as our perception goes. Um, so the complementary to yellow, I think is purple, Steph, but you're not far off. Uh, <laughs> almost there. Yeah, it gives you this strong uh, contrast anyway. Yeah, strong, yeah, strong contrast. But, yeah, so it, you know, it really works from that point of view. And okay, paper, the paper, this lovely piece, that's origami collage. It's the that's person. Who... That's mine again. Go on, tell us about it then. How it's did you basically... get it? I, I'm giving credit to my sister because she made me think of the idea to use like different pieces of different origami materials to sort of create this star shape. It's lovely. And so is each um, bit of the star a, um, a kind of a separate piece of paper that's folded? Yeah, each piece of paper is separately folded. And do you, do you do origami normally and that sort of thing? Yeah. It's really like, what do you think, Steph? I was going to say, you can tell you can you do our origami. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I would have been surprised if you said you hadn't. It's it's really lovely. Um, it's a te it's kind of a tessellation. I wonder if it does tessellate, you know, whether it, you could just keep making it. Yeah. But it makes me think of Islamic uh, patterning as well. Uh, and it's just it's just beautiful that you've made it from paper like that. Does anybody have any comments? I think it's really it's pretty. pretty it's really pretty. Yeah, it's really striking. Can you teach me how to do that? <laughs> Are you going to charge for lessons? <laughs> no, free lessons. Free lessons. Oh, you are good. <laughs> Share the love. <laughs> really good. Okay. And then I'll just move. And then let's go to this one. Gorgeous, isn't this? Uh, who is the person who did this here? Yeah, that's mine. It's great. How did you make it? Um, I didn't have a paintbrush. I was so annoyed. So what I, did you use? Basically, uh, I went to my kitchen, found this little, like, I don't know what it was. It wasn't even a brush. There was no brush on it. It was like this, um, I don't know what it was, just plastic thing in it so I could smooth it around all, everywhere. Oh, like a, a spatula or something like that? Yeah, yeah. It's like a spatula. And, um... I drew a circle with my compass, but it didn't turn out as a circle. It turned out into an, I don't know what shape that is anyways. It's close um, to. <laughs> yeah, and then, because you know the sun, I was trying to make it so that it projects the yellow to the surroundings. And then the white is meant to be the clouds in the sky. And then so like it merges, but then obviously I'd have a brush, so I couldn't do that. Oh, I think your lines just dropped. Uh, anybody want to comment on it? Steph, do you want to start? Yeah, I, I, well, I love how the, uh, I think you've done a great job. I love how the, the colours blend, um, like the, the the sun into the into the blue, for example. I love it's it. mesmerising, isn't it? Anybody want to have any comments? Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that you didn't find any bushes, because if you, if, you, if you did get the bushes, you, that, that effect that you've created, I don't think you'd be able to achieve that. That's actually very wonderful, and uh, I think it's quite expressive as well. Do you know what? That's a great point. I'll tell you something that is absolutely right. Sometimes it's something I learned at art school. Um, sometimes you can have too many options and too many materials and actually constraints can make something really interesting and good come out um, um, because you have to be extra creative. And uh, yeah, this is such a successful piece. I thought it was actually tissue paper kind of glued down at first yeah. when I just saw it as a small JPEG, you know, because it has this beautiful translucency. And I see fishes as well. I see the sea and the sky and sunsets. It's a real poem like all of these are actually. Okay, right, wonderful. So, and then this, my son, who did this? Not here? Steph, what do you think? I just love the, the colors and the contrast. Again, you've got the this really, deep red all the way to the green grass. Some really yeah. interesting brushwork going on, isn't there? It's like the yeah. background's being made and then the sun's overlaid on top. Well, is it a brush? <laughs> yeah, it, it could know. be done with fingers or, yeah, absolutely. 
Anybody um, got a perspective on this, comments? I love that. Do yeah, you really like it? Mm. It could, yeah. um, sometimes it's really nice to think of these things blown up as well. It could look really fantastic as a big, you know, imagine like a metre high or something. It'd be I amazing. Think, um, I think it's, uh, it's an interconnection between the Bangladeshi flag and India's flag as well, because of the colours. Yeah, totally. I see a flag. It's got flag-like qualities, but it's like the flag of all humanity, isn't it? And, and nature. It's um, brilliant. Really lovely. Um, okay. And I'm wondering where to go to next. Well, I think this lovely honeycomb. It's the person who did that here. I think that belongs to... Um... Um, Salah, um, Salah and uh, Basil. Um, they're actually uh, they're actually on holiday in Jordan at the moment. So okay. mind us. Well, there's a note here saying that they they've made it like the sun because uh, honey uh, like honey because honey is mentioned in the Quran, and so they've used this sort of beehive type um, patterning. Yeah. Is that is that right? Is honey mentioned in the Quran? In the Quran, I think I think it's spot on there, Geraldine. I think they have been inspired because um, um, prior to your first session, the first session that we had, it was in relation to who mentioned the Quran. So they probably did take inspiration from there. Yeah, I think you're spot on there. It's great. And what do you think, Steph? Because I think I can guess what you're going to say. Well, I, what do you think <laughs> you're going to say? I'm interested now. I was just looking. I was just. Um, I was distracted. I was looking at obviously the uh, the hexagon shapes, but then I saw in the the corner around the text this kind of little bubble. Is that what you thought I was going to say? No, I thought you might say that the uh, the honeycomb cells remind you of like the convection cells in the sun. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I I was looking at that, but then I but then I saw this little loop in the corner. It right reminded me of the uh, the eruptions around the text. Yeah, yeah. There's some fantastic eruptions on it. I think it's just great. It's so surprising. I love the mixture. And of course, flowers grow because of the sun and the bees harvest the honey because of the sun. And so it's it's another poem, isn't it? Very much like the poem we read last time around. It's lovely. And then we've got the planets here and they're all quite big. They, they, um, they would be in reality much smaller. So I don't know if you, anybody remembers how many Earths would fit across the front of the sun from last time. Has anybody got any recollection roughly? Do you remember, Steph? I'm just trying to think. <laughs> I'm just testing. <laughs> just testing. On, do you remember? Oh, I can't remember. I, I get my numbers confused. Whether it's <laughs> like one point. No, it's not one point three. Yeah, actually, okay. So one point three million Earths. Oh, are okay, that's right. Yeah. Inside. <laughs> but you can fit a hundred Earths across the front. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's look at the baking creations, which are so marvelous, and so. Um, I'm not going to zoom into these because we've got we'll do it we'll talk about them all at once because I think we've got um am I saying your name right Rania and Samaya you guys are the bakers in this group at the moment are you yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell us tell us the is that, you know I love 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 the way you photograph these cakes with the you have you put a kind of vignette around them as well yeah my mum did that it's so great. So tell us about these cakes, because you've both done something quite different with the first set of cakes. One of you was thinking, um, thinking about sunspots, I think. Uh, yeah, we both, both, um, we both had different ideas. And my mum said, because we've done baking for like a while, we, that would be a good idea. Um, <clears throat> my sister doesn't know. I did um, cupcakes and then I... I made icing with uh, icing sugar and water, and then I put some food coloring in it, and then I put it over the cupcakes, and I thought of using chocolate as some spot. What do you think, Steph? I'm just wondering what they tasted like. <laughs> Did they taste good? Have you eaten them? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, any comments from anybody? That's really nice. They're just but my piece. I didn't even get a piece of that pie. You didn't get a piece. <laughs> and what about the pies? 
They, are they savory pies? They're potato pies, did you say in your notes? Uh, yeah, potato and cheese. Uh, I think, was the other yours? I think it was cheese and onion. I don't remember. Yeah, cheese and onion, yeah. Well, they're fantastic. Now, do, do you, have you guys ever heard of um, a guy called Carl Sagan? Anybody heard of him? He was, no. he was around way before your time. Um, but he's kind of pretty famous on the telly here as a, as a scientist. He was a great scientist. And he, uh, can I just play you this little video that I put up here? I don't know if you know this, Steph. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, no, that's not what I wanted to happen. Oh, here we go. Maybe it's not right. If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Try and get to the back to the padlet now. Does anybody know what that means? Do you know what he's think, talking about? It was very quiet. I couldn't really hear that much. Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry, say again. It was very quiet, but um, I think he was um, talking about um the pie and how it um was it called with the sun. Yeah, he was saying. Um, I do you know that piece, Steph? Do you know that video? No, I I thought <laughs> I thought you were gonna turn around and, and say Carl Sagan was a fan of of baking. I didn't I didn't I haven't seen it. Yeah, it? no, he's saying so he said to to make an apple pie like you guys have done. Well, you, they weren't apple pies, but they were pies. First, you must make the universe, and yeah, he's just saying it's sort of obvious, right, that the whole universe has to exist over thirteen, nearly fourteen billion years for humans to arrive, to make flour, and to then make an apple pie. That's the prerequisite, an entire universe. And it seems really obvious, but it's also an amazing idea that that had to happen for you to make the apple pie. <laughs> Does it make sense, everyone? <laughs> amazing idea. Um, and we've got two poems. I don't know, are the poets here? No, um, sadly, Geraldine, they haven't joined us uh, for this session. Um, Anjum, was, Anjum did join us in the first session, but uh, sadly, they haven't been able to join for this session. I really recommend that everyone reads them. I think they're really remarkable poems. And so, um, yeah, do, do dip into those. So we won't, I was going to ask them to read them, but um, since they're not here, we won't do that. OK, um, any other comments about this artwork? Um, Mohammed, do you want to say anything? In general, speak speak about it in general. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. Um, you know, like how um, we were trying to explain the primary, secondary, and tertiary colours. I was I was I was going back to my college days, and I was trying to think of which ones are the primary colours and which ones are the secondary, and then it was into tertiary. Um, but anyway, no, I mean it's uh, you know this is a great example of uh, what creativity is about. You know, thinking out of the box. Uh, you know, we've got the classical paintings, the expressive paintings, along with you know using nature to represent things. That, then also using the food. So I hope from this session, we can actually go on to create our final um, final art pieces for our final exhibition. And I'm hoping to see lots of different, unique and creative um, things happening. Yeah, I mean, all of these are really amazing and you can play with them so much, play with these ideas and change the scale. And, and actually, I do want to say that there are more, there are more videos now on the magnet page and more magnet images. And actually those are also, to my mind, really lovely artwork some of them work so well visually and actually other people have said that what do you think Steph oh yeah I love it I, I had a look earlier and it's it's just I like as well uh the way that you've displayed it Geraldine because you you can just see all the artwork together we'll see it all together yeah and actually the videos as well where the iron filings are moving I was sharing that with a dancer friend she works at a dance conservatoire in London here and just showing her how uh, you know, just sharing with her the inspiration for dance. And you guys, you know, you really captured that in quite a few of the videos. So uh, I think you can definitely include those in the artworks. And if you do have a look at that page, I've also posted some very, very beautiful drawings by um, 
a guy called Michael Faraday, who really discovered a lot of the ideas that we have about magnets. And he drew the magnetic fields in this very fine pencil mark. So take a look, because they are really beautiful uh, drawing artworks. Okay, so I'm gonna stop share for a moment while I just get my slides. And, um, and as usual, I sort of have to sort of, um, okay. We'll just um, just gonna and then okay. Is that all up there then? Now is that good? Yeah, that's brilliant. Nice. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I love this poster, by the way. Who did that? Who did that, Mohammed? <laughs> um, sadly, it was me. It's great. Oh, how you've been to art school, Mohammed. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you, Steph? Yeah, you can. <laughs> brilliant. It's brilliant. Okay, so um, quick recap. Last time we spoke about the sun and we looked at its surface, and you guys have done this work with magnets. And it really, I think, you've really revealed how these patterns, you know, are occurring on the sun. That the sun is this gigantic, complex magnet. And we've already spoken about its size, and we've already said, it's responsible for, for pretty much everything for us. And so what I just want to do now is just think about um, Hassan Ibn al-Haytham um, and share with you one of his great pieces of work. And, you know, I must admit, you know, he, this guy um, was really new to me. And we all think about Newton, Isaac Newton, when we think about light and optics. But um, Al Haytham, he was born in Iraq, I think in Basra, um, 900 and something. I, I just can't see the date because I've got some Zoom stuff running across. But, and he was really, I think you could say, and a lot of people will say this, including people like Jim Al Khalili, the famous physicist you see on the TV. He was really probably one of the first great physicists in hu humanity. And he's regarded as the father of the whole field of uh, physics called optics, which is the sort of science of light and how we understand it. But actually, even more importantly, I would say, is he is thought of as the father of modern science. And when I say that, I mean something really important. And he, it's captured here in this quote, and I'll send you these slides, uh, Mohammed, afterwards to share with the group, and I'll pin them on the Padlet. But what does he say? Let me just... The, the duty of the man who investigates the writings of scientists, if learning the truth is his goal, is to make himself an enemy of all that he reads and attack it from every side. And he should also suspect himself as he performs his critical examination of it, so that he may avoid falling into either prejudice or leniency. And um, does anybody want to say what they think that might mean? There's some money issue there. Do you want to say something before I say anything in regards to this quote? No. So I think I think basically um, what it, what um, Ibn al Haytham is trying to say here is to uh, you know no matter what subject you're looking at, to, just to look at it from every single angle question everything about it before you can come to the truth. That's what he's trying to really say. Absolutely. And I think, does Syed have something to say? No, yeah. Syed, yeah. I think, you know, when he says um, to make himself an enemy of all that he reads, I think he's trying to say that make the best of what you read and then you could like learn more about it. So then whatever is not, let's say you're reading a book, you find extra information about it and then you can, let's say, share that with other people and then I think I think that's for, for, in my mind I think that's what he's trying to say yeah I mean he's using quite dramatic language and I, I think what he's really talking about is something that I would call like scientific integrity and I can send you some writing about this from a very famous physicist who followed on from Al-Hazan and he's really talking about you know when you do an experiment well that's the way we find things out we do experiments and we look at the results and we do them again and again. And when we do them, we are our own worst enemies. So we have to, because we want certain results often, or we have certain ideas. 
And we have to really be careful, first of all, not to fool ourselves and then not to fool anybody else. And that's in the best science, you see this kind of integrity, which is it's kind of really what we don't do in our culture. It's where we, we say, I've done this experiment. Now, how many ways can I think of that this result could be wrong? And scientists are forever challenging themselves. They challenge other people's results and their own results. And you keep questioning um, because you're searching for this truth about nature and, and Al-Hazan was the first to make a theory, look at nature, look at the results and compare them and work in this really kind of rigorous, thoughtful, careful way. Got a couple of more comments. Sorry, did you want to say something else? I think um, uh, Jay's got his hand up on the Shohana and Somalia. I think Jay's got his hand down. Shohana and Somalia, Somalia, do you want to say something? The viewer is says, if learning the truth is a goal, is to make if learning the truth is his goal, is to make himself an enemy of all he reads and attack it from every side. I think it means like disagree with it until uh, like it's proven like to be right and that like you can't like disagree with it. Yeah, he's saying you know convince me. You know I I need to be convinced. Uh, and enemy is kind of dramatic language, but it means he's challenging what he reads he doesn't want to take everything at face value uh what do you think steph have you do you agree yeah, with that interpretation it, it just yeah it just reminds me of um what we should try and well what us the scientists should try and do when we're conducting uh experiments um, and you're a scientist steph, i mean does it feel like this does your world feel like this, that this is what you do? Yeah, and I think I think what sticks out for me is I think you have to be careful about um, biases, like certain biases that you can have. Um, and that can be, for me, that can be research that I've previously done or people that I work with. We all have, the, you, you grow up with the same views as your supervisors and your mentors. So it's, it, you need to, you need to challenge it from every side, but that's where I think um, younger scientists uh, like yourselves maybe uh, can come up and challenge um, some of the scientists that have been around and some of the theories that have been around for years. A lot of the time it, uh, it takes a new perspective to make progress, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And Zara, do you want to say something? Yeah, um, do you know the first like, three, to, um, three to four lines, um, it makes me think of um, like nothing's going to stop because this is like the duty of a man. So the duty um, of like nothing's going to like nothing's going to stop anybody from like like learning more. So like him, I think he's trying to say um, like his goal is to learn a lot more. And even if he has to do a lot of stuff, he'll still he's still going to make it no matter what. No, absolutely. Yeah, he's a very focused man. And I think that's, I think, I mean, Steph would probably agree, it does take real focus to do science, doesn't it, and determination. It really, I think it really does. I think that's one of the main, the key ingredients, focus and determination along with yeah. hard work. So, so guys, I want to really underline just how important this man was to the whole way that we all go about doing science these days. So I'm going to set out there, and there's a link there that, um, to an article by Jim Al Khalidi, a fellow that you sometimes see on the television talking about this. Uh, you might know him actually. Uh, but now I want to go on to something that he was famous for. And does anybody know what this is? Do you know what's going on here? There's a there's a room. Is it like a projector? It looks like a projector, doesn't it? Anybody else? Is it, um, like uh, when the sunlight uh, goes through um, a hole and then it makes a shadow. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like so. So is it replicating over... the eye. Say again. What did you just say? Is it replicating the eye? Well, it's not really. So what's going on is you see the minaret on the right, and there are these fellows here, and they're in this room. Just imagine a darkened room, and they've made a little hole in the wall here, and the rays of light come from the minaret, follow these lines, travel through the hole, and they hit the screen here. So the top of the minaret, so the, what these guys can see in this room is the minaret, but upside down. 
And Al Hazan, so it probably seems strange to us at the time, but there was a debate over how we see things and people thought that light shone out of our eyes and lit things up. And um, people didn't, you know, we still don't fully understand light, but what he wanted to show was that light is coming from something into our eyes and that it's traveling in straight lines. And that's what he's showing. And on your GCSE syllabus, your teachers will probably just see this listed as pinhole or camera obscura. That's what this is called. And actually this is the origin of all cameras and photography in the world. So it's a really, really important idea. And I just want to explore it a bit and then give you a bit of a, an art science challenge. So this is what you can do with something like this so this is um, someone's taken their room just like in the drawing covered up the windows and made a pinhole and this is the view from outside on your on the wall anyone can do this do just exactly what al hazan did it's quite amazing don't you think that you can see the view from outside on your wall upside down and that's all just through you must just leave a pinhole and um so what I've done here, I'll send this to you. I've got a link here. You'll see some students at the Manchester School of Photography turning their bedrooms into pinhole cameras. Amazing, all inspired by Al Hazan. Um, and then actually um, on this link, you'll actually see some images of pinhole photographs that were shown in Bradford. Uh, the show's no longer on, but you might just enjoy some of the images. Have you ever played with pinhole stuff, Steph? Yeah, well, actually, the first time um, I saw an eclipse, uh, I made a pinhole camera out of a card, a massive cardboard box. I think that was back in 1998 well, or 1999. Steph. What was it? The, the, um, the total eclipse that we had in yeah. England. Yeah, you've you just uh, we hadn't planned this, guys. I hadn't. Uh, Steph didn't know I was going to ask her that, but let's bring it down to the next thing. So. Yeah, um, so you can uh, use uh, the pinhole idea to make all sorts of images. Um, it's so simple. You can use your room as a giant pinhole camera. All you need is a hole. Um, but picking up on Steph's point, I don't know if any of you have ever seen the sun coming through leaves and looked at it on the ground. Uh, this is actually an eclipse happening um, and when you look carefully, it's not just sunlight making a pattern of the leaves on the floor. It's circular light and it's basically an image of the sun. So this is the tree acting as loads of pinholes. The gaps in the leaves are put, letting these images fall all over the pavement. It's a really, really beautiful thing. And as Steph says, it's really dangerous to look at the sun. Uh, but you can use pinholes to image it. And here the tree is doing that just naturally for us. So when you are out and about on sunny days, just observe a little bit more closely the sun on the ground, because it's not an image of the tree. It is, they are rounded images of the sun that you're seeing on, on the floor. Kind of amazing everyday thing. And to your point, Steph, um, um, you can literally go out, with a piece of card and a pinhole in it and take a sheet of paper as well and just po point the card up at the sun. You can't look at the sun, it's too dangerous. Um, and then hold a sheet. You can put a bunch of holes in the card actually and you'll get multiple images of the sun and the information of how to do it is here. There's a little video I want to show you but I'm just not sure videos are working that well, are they? Shall I give it a shot? Um, I'll give it a shot and if it doesn't work, um, we will. Oops. Let me see now. Um, okay. One second, everybody. I'm grateful for your patience here. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is um, a guy called, um, hang on a second, 
I'm not seeing it. Um, I see. Oh. Sorry, everyone. I need to get slicker at this. Okay, can you see that? Um, this is a guy called Bob Miller, and he um, he's a, unfortunately dead now, and he worked at a, a museum in uh, California called the Exploratorium. And um, I'm just gonna make sure that I share with you uh, sound as well. Um, share sound, optimize for video clip, okay. Um, oh dear. Sorry, everybody. I've got all sorts going on here. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So here's Bob. Um, and he's going to talk about this pinhole and he's just going to show you how it works. Let's just run it and see if we can. The absence of light can be as revealing as light itself. As Exploratorium artist Bob Miller explains. So here's some nice ones. See the shadows of the trees here on the ground. Well, if you use a white bar, they show up a lot better. And it's kind of fun. You can't have a shadow without having some light. So it's kind of instructive to actually look at the light that's reaching the board. The light that comes through the holes in between the trees reaches the board and it's round because the holes in between the leaves act just like pinholes. So you get round images of the sun every place you got a hole in between the leaves. Well, if light is images, and shadows are blocking light. In some sense, then shadows are really blocking images. And that does lead to some nice surprises. Let's go over and look at some shadows in the direct sunlight. Here we can use a board that has some different shaped holes. As we let the light go through the holes, each one of those spots of light resolves into a round image of the sun, independent of the shape of the hole. Here we got some diffuse white light again, like we had outside with the sunlight. But in this case, We've got cross fluorescent tubes as our light source. Looks the same as it did outside, diffuse white light. But take a look, it's really different. Here's a hole in a panel. I pull that back and we look at the light that goes through the hole and reaches the screen. And you can see that it's in the form of an image of the cross fluorescent tubes. It's obviously the light going through that hole. If I put my finger over the hole, the image disappears. So if instead of a hole, I take this black dot and put the black dot out here where that hole was, this black dot is going to block the light that went through the hole. And sure enough, the shadow of this black dot is a missing image of the cross fluorescent tubes. With a grease pencil, I can put another little dot here on the panel. And we can see that that dot also blocks an image of the cross fluorescent. So the shadow of that dot puts a missing image. I put another dot here. We get another missing image. In fact, I can put so many, this turns just into a black opaque bar there. And the shadow that you can see is made up of a whole bunch of missing images of the cross fluorescent tube, just as the shadow of my finger would be. So I could use the shadow of my finger. So every little part of my finger, my hand, my arm, anything that casts a shadow, each small part of that object is blocking an image of the light source. In this case, images of the cross fluorescent tubes. So you can see that the structure around the edge of the shadow gives you a lot of information about where the light is coming from. Just stop that a second. Yeah, so back to the where we were. Um, yeah, so. I've lost everybody now. He's still there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sorry, everyone. Okay, so I don't know if you could follow that, but um, you know, he was expanding on this idea of the pinhole and maybe just watch the video again. But basically, you know, what Al Hazam found is if you think about when you walk around, wherever you put your eye in space, there's an image, isn't there? Wherever you put your eye, and it's not surprised, you're not surprised by that. But I think there's a poet called Walt Whitman and it, he wrote a poem called Miracles and he wrote every cubic inch of space is a miracle. And I think 
that's what this is about in some ways that you know wherever you put your pinhole there is information there is an image um and if you take it outside on a sunny day everywhere in space is an image of the sun and equally everywhere in space is an image of everything you see and so space is full of images and it's a really kind of deep interesting thing to think about um, and I'm sharing this with you because you know your teachers will teach you about the pinhole camera but it's a really deep and interesting idea and it goes all the way back to Al Hassan and I don't know whether you guys want to take on this project uh, but my proposal is if you're interested uh, so Mohammed, let me know if you want me to send some of uh, this stuff up you know, what you can do is you can, I don't know if you guys have ever come across this paper, it's called sun print paper. And basically you can put it out into the sun and every bit of the paper that's exposed to the sun will get lighter. And so it catches images and you can develop it by just putting it in water. So it's like super easy photography. And you can fold it into a little box uh, using origami. There's a few different ways to do that and make a pinhole and leave the box outside, leave it in your backyard or wherever you want. I don't know how long you'd have to leave it. You'd have to do some experiments with that. But when you open up the box, you will have captured an image of whatever that box was looking at. But you need to be quite careful. You'll need to take the box and put it in a plastic bag and then take it indoors. And everything here I'll send you has got links so you can figure out how to do it. But I have never done it and I've always wanted to do it. And if you guys, if anybody in this group fancies trying it, I'll send you a pack of the sun print kit paper and you can give it a, sh a go. And it's basically origami, fold a little box and take the box out into the light with the little hole in it, leave it, don't move it bring it back in in a plastic bag, soak it in water, and the image will appear, the pinhole image will appear. Let me know if any of you guys are up for it, because I've always wanted to do it and I've never got round to it. But anyway, you can have a look at some of those links. And um, yeah, it's a way, you know, basically you're capturing images in space using a pit single pinhole from Al Hazan. Oh, yes. That's so amazing. It, I think it is. I mean, I feel like I'm giving you a lot to think about, but it's amazing. And it's everyday stuff that's going on all around us all the time. All around you are images. And yeah, you can capture them with a pinhole. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, Geraldine. Um, um, the chairman of the Russian Science Initiative is actually watching the session from home and, 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 and his message saying, that looks amazing. I want to try this. <laughs> That's totally brilliant. Uh, please send us the results. Post them on our Padlet, in fact. Mohammed, we'll have to post our Padlet details to everyone and put them up on Padlet because they, you know, to me, um, those are artworks. Pinhole images are absolutely artworks. It's a pure fusion of science and art. So, uh, but, you know, if you just want to get started, head out. I even head out in winter into my street outside and stand under the street lamps and you can play with the images. So um, have a go, just take a pinhole out with you. Uh, and also you can, um, you don't need to make an origami box. You can use a bean can or um, a little uh, tube that, that holds uh, old fashioned pho photographer's film. You know, anything that will create a black space and you put a pinhole in, you can capture images. Um, okay, so we're coming to the end, but I just wanted to really share two more amazing ideas and Steph, please add any others you want to. But does anybody know what this table is? Periodic, periodic table. table. Periodic table. What, what is the periodic table? A list of elements. Elements, yeah. Yeah, elements list. are found there. And what is an element? What are elements? It's... um. Masses and metals. They may, they're the things that make up our world, aren't they? They're not light, but they're the things that make up our material world that's all around us. And does anybody recognise anything on the table? Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Go yeah, on, shut something out. What do you recognise? Hydrogen on the top left. Hydrogen, top left, yeah. Hydrogen Car is, go on. Carbon Sorry. dioxide. Carbon, um, oxygen, yeah. And so, so um, hydrogen. Um, so basically the table's organized from the lightest to the heaviest. 
and hydrogen is the most important atom in the universe in some ways it's the most predominant. Boy. yeah anyway why am i showing you this because does anybody know where these all come from the sun yeah right so very yeah the sun and speaking very generally the sun they all come from stars ex extinct stars and um this is the human um mostly mostly we are made of these atoms hydrogen and oxygen that that makes water hard h2o nitrogen and carbon and uh yeah everything um in this table comes from stars ancient dead stars and so the, my first idea that i want to share with you is just that everything around us and ourselves are made from uh, the dust from stars and everything up to about iron is made by stars uh, the same size or smaller than our sun and everything above iron is made when really big stars bigger than our sun explode in giant supernovae and the atoms are made during that explosion these really heavy these it gets basically goes from light to heavy so these heavier ones are made in supernova um, so you know when you find a piece of gold which is a heavy heavy thing or uh, mercury um, they came from uh, those atoms those elements came out of supernova explosions so that's my first idea did you guys all know that no i didn't know that okay do you like the idea zara yeah that's very i can't have my head around that it's just so confusing it's so amazing i know and so i don't really call this the table of elements i call it the table of, of of actually i call it types of big bang and stardust because hydrogen the lightest one was made at the very beginning of the universe in the big bang and everything else pretty much happened um in stars so that's the one thing i wanted to share and um the last thing i wanted to share is if you guys are up for it just to show you um how big stars can get in our universe, how big objects can get. So I've just got a video to share with you. Um, and I'll just I'll just play that now and you can, Stephanie knows this video, so. I like this video. <laughs> okay, so you ready? So, we, so everybody, we're gonna start with the moon and the moon is, um, if you put it next to the earth, you'd fit four moons across the face of the earth. And we're going to start with the moon and we're going to go up through some of the planets and we're going to get to our sun and then we're going to go from there. So here we go. The music's really dramatic. I didn't choose the music. There we go, that's us. There you go, everyone. Gives just gives you a bit of perspective. Yeah, that was very like fascinating. There's so many planets bigger than the sun. So many things bigger than the sun. That's right. Yeah, our sun is a relatively modest um, sized object. Yeah, that was very overwhelming. A bit overwhelming. I'm sorry to overwhelm you with all of those ideas, but I'll send I'll send all the information over. No, that's good. <laughs> Good stuff to think about. That was quite cool. 
<laughs> so that's it. I think that's it, guys, um, for this evening. That's and uh, Stephanie, do you have anything else you want? Do you want to comment on anything that uh, you just seen? No, just that that movie. Well, makes me think every time, even though I've seen it multiple times, it makes me think how small we actually are compared to some of the largest stars that are out there. Yeah, it really makes you think. And if you, if any of you want to try that, making a little camera uh, with uh, this uh, special paper that just develops in water, um, let Mohammed know. And I, I, you know, Mohammed, you can let me know, and I'll send a pack up I'll, and uh, probably get it to you within probably, hopefully, two days. I don't know. Things can be a bit slow at the moment. But uh, if anybody wants to try that experiment, I've never done it. I would love for you to try it. Um, and you know, give us a shout. Um, anything you wanted to talk about any artworks anything any questions you have i mean do, do, if anybody has any questions please shout now as well um yeah um well first of all thank you very much Jamdi and stephanie as well again you know another amazing session there's so much to take from here um there's so much we can do and it's just gonna enhance you know the overall content that we can create for the final exhibition and um yeah i mean if um yeah, I mean the hands are raising up. Um, I think um, in, in relation to the the art science challenge that you put forward, I think it's uh, I think it's unanimous that everybody wants to um, take the take on the challenge. So I think you you will have to get the kits ready for us. And so well, yeah. listen, I'm just so I'm just going to send you. It's literally I'm going to buy buy it on Amazon and send it up, and it's just going to be sheets of A4 paper, um, this special paper, and you'll just have to look at the instructions on the PowerPoint. Now. Yeah, that, under all those images, there are links, and um, yeah, see what you make of it. I don't know how long you're going to have to leave them in the sun to get them to develop, so you'll definitely need to do some experimentation to figure it out. But I think you could end up making some really lovely artworks that are beautiful fusion of art and science. Wonderful. Okay, I can see there's um, quite a lot of questions, uh, hands raised up. So uh, maybe if we start with um, Hamza, do you want to ask your question first? Me? Yes, Hamza, please. Um, if, if, there's, um, if the sun is tiny compared to other stars, how many Earths could fit in the largest known star? <laughs> well, I think you're going to have to go and get a bit of paper and work it out. Do you, you don't know, Steph, do you off the top of your head? <laughs> no, I'm just going to say, well, it's going to be billions, right? Yeah, it's going to be Even billions. Who knows? Yeah. Um, I'll, um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll send the, uh, the video. I'll upload it onto our file exchange so Mohammed can get to it. And uh, you can e watch it again if you like and um, Google that biggest star and do some, um, some simple maths. But there'll be a lot of zeros, I think. <laughs> there will. <laughs> um, right, um, we are running out of time. So um, I think we'll have to get, this question, get through these questions as quick as possible. So um, Sahel, do you want to ask your question? So my, um, it was a very um, good lesson today, I learned a lot. But my first question is, how did you find out about all the um, bigger stars than the sun? Do you know, do you know about that stuff? Can you talk about that, how we know about those stars? Yeah, so we have a, we have a lot of telescopes in space that look out into the distant universe. So one of them's called Hubble. And Hubble just stares into the universe and, and looks at all these stars and all the different galaxies other than our own. And this is how we start to learn about stars other than our sun. There are. And that, they, I think they have a great website, um, Steph, don't they? You could just literally Google um, Hubble, H-U-B-B-L-E. Yeah, there's a very, I wonder if I, um, if you carry on talking, I can show you a picture, um, a very famous image. Ah, uh, here we go. Um, that. Hubble has seen so it shows you so these are actually galaxies rather than stars so galaxies are made up of so this is what Hubble sees oh where's the picture gone so yes yeah, so this picture here is are all different objects that Hubble um, can look at and I think there are I, I can't even imagine how many stars there are um, in these galaxies so each one of these little things are, are galaxies here made up of each, each one is so each one is sort of like our, like our Milky Way then stuff is what you're saying yeah exactly so imagine hundreds of Milky Ways and this is just a section of the sky it's not even the entire 
uh, it's just looking in one direction from Hubble. So it gives you an idea of how big the universe actually is. An amazing image. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Steph. And um, my second question is, how far is the biggest planet away from Earth? The, how far is the biggest planet from Earth? Yeah. Well, that's I, so, St Steph. You know, it's another one of these difficult ones because there's planets in our Milky Way, our, uh, in our sorry, in our solar system, planets around the sun. Yeah. But but then one of I mean, it's gosh, I just don't, so. Are you thinking about planets outside of our solar system? You're thinking of planets in that image that Steph showed us, for example. Yeah, I'm really saying like? inside our Milky Way solar system. In our Milky Way. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I know there's a lot of, we found a lot of, um, they call them hot Jupiters. So they're basically uh, Jupiter sized planets that orbit very close in to their star, hence the name hot Jupiters. So we found a lot of those type of planets orbiting um, stars of their own. But we've also started to find other um, stars with Earth like planets orbiting around as well. So and there Steph, are many, many systems out there, sorry. Yeah, and stuff. those are called exoplanets, aren't they? Yeah, they're called exoplanets. So, so yes. planets outside of our solar system. Yeah, so you could Google exoplanets and you'll learn about the planets that are like Earth, have conditions that could have conditions like Earth. If you go to a project, is it the Kepler project? Yeah, the Kepler project. I think we've identified maybe up to 5,000 uh, candidate planets. So planets, um, so objects out there that may be planets. I think the most interesting one is the Trappist system, which has got seven Earth-like planets orbiting around its star. Wow. Thanks, mm -hmm. Dad. All right. So um, we're about three minutes away, and it might just automatically um, cut the live stream. If it does, um, please do forgive us. We're not being rude or anything. Um, so, um, Zara, uh, Zara, if you could ask a question. Yeah. Um so before you asking how big was the sun I drew, and I have the picture here, so I'll just show it you. Brilliant. This is it. So you were asking like how big it is, and this is the paper and sun. So I just thought I'll show you. Oh, oh, thank you so much. It's an absolutely gorgeous piece. They all are. You know, we've been blown away. Uh, so wow. thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that, Zara. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Um, I think the final question will go to Jahed. Jahed, you want to ask your question? Yeah, so, um, you know, there's no stupid questions, right? There are no, no stupid, stupid questions. questions. They're often the best ones, actually, the ones that seem a bit daft. <laughs> so <laughs> Those are the ones um, I ask all the time. Go up. So I was just sitting down, lying in my bed, and I, I, I've got a picture of a certificate with a sun on it. I was thinking, why is it called sun? And then... Yes, like the uh, the word sun has two meanings, doesn't it? Sun as in like um the big sun as in the sky and other sun as a boy. Why would they name it sun for? I don't know. Do you do you know any do you know about the etymology of the naming of the sun, Steph? I feel like I um I've definitely looked at this before, but um I'm trying to think back to wasn't it the might have been the Egyptians or one of the gods that it's you know they started to you had the sun god um yeah. which, which was Ra which I think means does that mean sun in Egyptian I think but it does yeah that's I mean, as far back as I know I don't actually know where where it ca came from other than maybe that it will certainly be in Google and I don't think it's anything to do with like, the, the, the male child sorry Zara go on Yeah, I don't think it's anything to do with um, the male child. I think they have totally different roots. But have a look on Wikipedia. It will, it will be there, I think. And the sun has, I mean, what, do, what is the sun? How, what does the Quran call the sun? Shumps. 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 Shumps, yeah. And what, where does that come from? Do you know? Interesting. Uh -huh. It's just such an interesting thing, actually, to think about what different cultures call the sun and to look at where that's come from. And you'll probably find some amazing stories behind each name that different cultures use. So a bit yeah. of research. Yeah. yeah, that could be a nice art project, actually. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. So, Jahe, that just proves that I mean, your questions are not a silly, stupid question. They're right to, they open the doors to many other things. 
So, so uh, absolutely. I will say, you know, whenever you ask questions about words, it can open doors to so many things and it gives you a window on our minds and how we think about things and how we've discovered things. It's a really interesting question. Yeah, um, well, I, uh, I think we will have to end it here today. Um, so it just remains for me to, I mean, to thank, we're truly grateful to um, Geraldine and Stephanie for making the time for us. It's been an absolute pleasure. And um, we are going to meet Geraldine in person uh, in a few more weeks time. She will become to watch still uh, to help us with this uh, sun exhibition and the final event that we're doing. So we're, we're all looking forward to that. And um, Geraldine is kind of providing us with the materials to do that art challenge as well. So that's something else for us to look forward to. Um, does Geraldine or uh, Stephanie have any last things to say before we just, end it? Just to say, it's been such a pleasure uh, these two evenings with you guys. And thank you so much for your curiosity and your great questions and great observations. And um, we'll send you um, a, li a little PDF of everything that we just talked about tonight so that everyone can have a recap because I know there's loads to think about. Uh, but no, just big thank you. Yeah, big thank you for having us and thank you for mainly, well, obviously the artwork, but your enthusiasm and the questions have just been amazing. So, you know, thank you for, yeah, thank you for having us and letting us uh, share this knowledge with you all. Yeah, thank you. And we'll be, and our colleague Helen Mason, who's a, um, working at Cambridge University, will be sharing all of your artwork at a conference tomorrow, which is really nice. So I'll let her know that she can do that tonight and uh, she'll be delighted. So thank Beautiful. you. Wonderful. Thank you very before much. We, before we break up, can I quickly say one little thing? Okay, go on, Dad, quick. It's about the glasses question. I already asked them, so in the comment or whatever, the chat, please do not say ask the glasses. I already asked them already in the last session. Right, okay, yeah. So, uh, um, yes, you have already asked them the question about the glasses. And according to Jahed, um, well, it, it, it's, it's still continuous research, so we'll, we'll, we'll wait till he finishes his research and then we'll find yeah, out. Yeah, I think you've got to think like Al Hassan and what he said, which is, you know, really rigorous investigation. Uh, don't fool yourself. I know you want to believe that wearing glasses makes you more intelligent. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> but you have to pack it up with the evidence. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Right, so we really will have to end it there, and on that note, we will end it. Um, thank you very much, everyone, again, and assalamu alaikum. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Wa alaikum salam. Yeah, thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Thanks.